In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. In the next part of the animation, there are two sequential scenes that, although may seem different, they have a very close connection in terms of the meaning that convey. For this reason, we shall analyze them in conjunction. In the beginning of these two sequential scenes, we see the blue child or Nufem Blue character, about whom we shall speak more in the next scenes, is still dancing around the fire while wearing a mask which resembles the ancient Indian goddess Kali. In the next scene, we face a different atmosphere. In this space, there are many neat and smartly dressed men wearing suits and holding a briefcase in their hands, as they are standing in various orderly rows. In this instance, suddenly the Antichrist rises above the group of men standing in rows while yawning, and with a flick of his hands destroys them all. Since these aforementioned sequential scenes are related to each other, we shall discuss their elements and parts in order and sequence as well. First, we will discuss the first scene. Since in this scene, the Kali character has a very significant role, we need to explain this character and its importance in Masonic and Illuminati symbology in more depth. Although, speaking about ancient India's goddesses is difficult because they may have a different place in alternative Hindu sects' beliefs and dogma. We can present some general information about many famous Indian goddesses. Kali is the goddess in Hindu beliefs who is a symbol of the feminine side of the world's creation and is considered as the great mother goddess. On the other hand, taking into account its relation with the word Kalaka, which means dark blue. She is depicted as a blue-colored goddess with a third eye in the center of her forehead. Kali is also known as the owner of fire and in many images, a halo of fire has been illustrated around her. Furthermore, in Hindu beliefs, the Kali goddess is known as the spouse of the deity Shiva. In truth, Kali and Shiva complement one another, in a way that in Hindu myths, the unbalance or Kali's excessive power brought the world to the brink of destruction. However, with Shiva's intervention, she regretted her choice and changed her mind. Considering the close relation between Shiva and his spouse, Kali in Hindu beliefs and the link between this point and the rest of our discussion, we shall further speak about the deity Shiva. Shiva is considered a great deity in Hindu beliefs. She is the god of divine energy, meditation, dance, time, change and revolution, creation and destruction. As you can see, many of Shiva's attributes are common with his supposed Kali in Hindu beliefs. These two deities are the complementing male and female poles and share many characteristics. Among Shiva's characteristics, it has been mentioned that he has a third eye in his forehead and is depicted in blue color in many paintings. Shiva is the god of yoga and yoga is considered as a part of worshipping him. However, the important notion regarding Shiva and his spouse Kali in both of them are known as a symbol of Satan in devil-worshipping beliefs. To an extent that, in the famous devil-worshipping book titled The Satanic Bible, Shiva and Kali are considered as infernal names and are deities of destruction on the same level as Satan or Lucifer. Though, in the Satanic Bible's text, Kali is mentioned as Shiva's daughter, which is a wrong claim, and in Indian legends, Kali is Shiva's spouse. Considering the presented explanations, we can now conduct a layer-by-layer -layer analysis of the aforementioned scenes. In the first layer analysis of the first scene, we can point to the fact that 
There's a link established between the evil Indian goddess Kali and the fire flame, which is in line with infidel Hindu beliefs. On the other hand, the blue child or Nafon Blue has a connection with the Hindu goddess Kali and her blue body color in Indian myths. With regards to the blue child in particular, it is mentioned on the animation maker's website that he's the keeper of the flame. This notion adds another link between the blue child and Kali. In the second layer analysis of this scene, we realize that Kali is the goddess of destruction. Her indication in this part of the animation is in line with the Antichrist's destructive characteristics in Apocalypse. In a way that, in the next scene, the Antichrist's presence causes the destruction of the current world order and establishment of the new world order. In the third layer of this scene, one of the important beliefs of Freemasons regarding the world and the order governing it has been indicated. Demonstration of Kali as she is dancing is in fact pointing towards the dance of Shiva, her opposite pole as well. Both these deities symbolically indicate a part of the Freemasons' beliefs regarding the world order and management, based on classic and modern physics. Considering the fact that this discussion requires a very high attention to details, in this section we will primarily explain some seemingly unrelated topics, which are in fact quite related to our discussion. Hence, we begin with some laws of physics. According to the law of conservation of mass energy, total amount of matter and energy in the world is stable. Matter and energy convert into one another, but do not diminish. Furthermore, according to the principle of mass energy equivalence, energy equals mass times the speed of light squared or E equals mc powered by 2. But what is the relation between knowing these laws of physics and the beliefs of Freemasons and Illuminati? In order to answer this question, first, it is better to look at the content written in Masonry publications regarding Masonic beliefs. It has been proven that the God who created and could destroy everything and surrounds the universe is, in fact, energy. A.G.E. page 54 Freemasons have described the concept of the great architect of the universe based on contemporary science and superior perfection as follows. All creatures of the world that are consisted of definite particles and atoms are parts of the total absolute energy. Considering the principle of conservation of mass energy, it is proven that nothing perishes due to the interaction between materials and the changes caused by movement of atoms are superficial in nature. Freemasonry has accepted this principle and foundation as a doctrine, thesis, belief, and faith. Mason Publication No. 82.5, 1971, page 20. The emerging of thoughts regarding the endurance of souls is as old and worn as the belief of the existence of God. Mimer Sinan Publication, number 24, page 32. As you observed, Freemason groups also claim to believe in a supreme being similar to divine religions, so as to lessen the sensitivity of religious groups towards themselves. They call this superior being the great architect of the universe, or the supreme being. Contrary to the alluring veneer of the above expressions, None of them are related to the Magnificent God. The Supreme Being or the Great Architect of the Universe is the same as the balance within the world of creation, or the energy creating the balance in the world of creation, in deviated Masonic views. This thought is quite similar to views governing infidel schools of thought, such as ancient Egypt's school of thought. What is the relation between the law of conservation of mass energy and similar laws of physics to Freemasonry beliefs? Is there belief in the great architect of the universe which is shown with the letter G in Masonic symbols 
in the sense of their belief in metaphysical beings, then what becomes of Masonic materialism? Doesn't Masonic materialism oppose beliefs in metaphysical beings? How come that Freemasons have alluded to lack of beliefs in angels and the God, but there are various hints regarding their belief in Lucifer or Satan as well as the goddesses of ancient nations? The answers to these questions are attainable through the use of the aforementioned publication and Freemasons' abuse of the law of conservation of mass energy. The answer is that Freemasons believe in Satan or Lucifer, jinns, and demons, because they count Lucifer and jinns as material. Furthermore, deities of ancient nations that have usually been depicted in blue color in remaining paintings, calligraphies, and statues from all ages are all symbols of jinns and demons that appeared among ancient nations' priests and brought them to corruption and ruin. In truth, the global Freemasonry respects the ancient nations' infidel symbols that relate to the devil, in line with keeping connection with Lucifer or Satan in the current age, because they believe that the jinns, demons, and in particular, the Satan himself, are in fact the goddesses of the ancient infidel nations that introduced themselves as the creator and god among infidel and idolater nations of ancient Egypt, India, Mesopotamia, Northern and Southern America, as well as in the presence of the priests. They did so by using their power of teleportation and covering thousands of kilometers within minutes. But do the Freemasons and Illuminati believe in God, angels, metaphysical affairs? In one word, no. In principle, the horizon of Masonic and Illuminati beliefs is matter, meaning that Freemasons accept jinns, demons, and the Satan or Lucifer himself as material beings. However, they have no belief in the God, angels, and in corporeal beings, because in their views, these issues and topics are fantasies and are not explainable within the mass and energy framework. But what is the reason for counting jinns, demons, and in particular the Satan himself as material in Masonic views? How does the Masonic materialism that sees everything as matter through the all-seeing eye accept the devil and his fellow demons as material beings? In the eyes of some Illuminati and Freemasonry groups, as well as some divine Christian documentations, Satan, Lucifer, or the Devil is sometimes considered as a separate being from demons or satanic jinns, and at other times, he is considered at the same level as demons. However, the point that holds value in Freemasonry and Illuminati beliefs is that Satan is known as the Illuminati Light bearer. In any case, Freemasons and Illuminati have taken advantage of laws of particle physics and its equations in order to justify their belief in Satan and demons. In this regard, one of the beliefs that has repeatedly drawn Freemasonry and Illuminati's attention is the pair production per annihilation theorem in particle physics. Fundamentally, speaking this subject involves the field of matter and antimatter. For example, electron is a matter particle that is shown with E-, while positron is an antimatter particle that is shown with E plus sign. Per annihilation is described as when the collision or combination of an electron E- and positron E+, plus results in the creation of two gamma-ray type photons under specific physical conditions. In reverse, pair production is described as the production of an electron E- and a positron E+, as a result of the collision of two gamma rays under certain physical circumstances. However, pair production and pair annihilation are not limited to electrons and positrons. Other elementary or fundamental particles, such as protons, have a relative antimatter 
as well as the per production and per annihilation are applicable to them as well. But what is the importance of per production and per annihilation in masonry and illuminati beliefs as well as the materialistic satanism? This theorem is important for Freemasonry and Illuminati from some perspectives. First, by citing this theorem in particle physics, they believe that similar to the way matter can turn into energy and energy can turn into matter. According to these equations, accepting genes and the Satan is compatible with Masonic materialism. Because if we consider Lucifer as the Luciferian light, he can turn into both matter and antimatter and hence can be considered as a material being like demons, jinns and humans in Freemason reviews. In other words, in the eyes of Freemasons, humans and jinns are the equivalents of matter and antimatter and their combination creates the Luciferian light. It is essential to note that Antimatter is very similar to matter. It has mass, electric charge, magnetic properties, and so on. Its difference with its corresponding matter is in electric charge and magnetic properties. Hence, believing in antimatter is a materialistic belief. Considering the above content, we can say that genes and demons are antimatter and are considered as another form of matter in Freemasonry and Illuminati's views, which means they have no contradiction with Masonic materialism. However, the Magnificent God, Angels, Heaven and Hell are not considered as energy that can be turned into matter or antimatter in Masonic convictions, and for this reason they are not accepted by Freemasonry and Illuminati. The second point regarding the per annihilation and per production theorem is that, as a result of the collision between matter and antimatter particles, two illuminated particles, meaning gamma ray protons, are created. In Freemason reviews, the two initial particles, I mean matter and antimatter, are the equivalent of the worlds of humans and jinns, or demons, respectively. Correspondingly, as a result of the union of humans and jinns, which are considered the equivalents of matter and antimatter, two photons or gamma ray particles are discharged that are considered the Luciferian light. However, this light is made of matter, or in other words, it is a light that can return to matter and antimatter form and differs from the light that is mentioned in divine books regarding the God, his Empyrean, the angels, and so on. The important point that needs to be noted here is that this type of light particle, which is a result of the collision between the electron and the positron, or matter and antimatter, is made of gamma rays. The word gamma in Greek is the equivalent of the letter G in Masonic symbology, which stands for the great architect of the universe in English. In other words, there is an exact and tight connection between the gamma rays and the famous letter G in Masonic logos and lodges, and the cryptic Masonic expression great architect of the universe concerning the creator of the world. Of course, this does not mean that all the activities of Freemasons have been based on science and physics since centuries ago. With the passage of time, pagans, Satanists and Freemasons have abused various subjects by linking their infidel symbols to them. This is true in particular considering the fact that they had a shrewd and evil teacher such as Lucifer who has endeavored to deviate and deceive Freemasonry leaders and infidel ancient nations priests by teaching and revealing various mysteries to his followers in different times and places. Considering what has been said, we can fully understand the meaning of hereunder expressions regarding Freemasons' views on the creator of the world. 
Freemasons have described the concept of the great architect of the universe based on contemporary science and superior perfection as follows. All creatures of the world that are consisted of definite particles and atoms are parts of the total absolute energy. Considering this principle of conservation of mass energy, it is proven that nothing perishes due to the interaction between materials and the changes caused by the movement of atoms are superficial in nature. Freemasonry has accepted this principle and foundation as a doctrine, thesis, belief, and faith. Mason Publication, number 82.5, 1971, page 20. Yes, friends. Freemasons accept a form of energy as the creator that itself has a potential to turn into matter. In other words, Freemasonry's belief in creation and existence of humans and jinns is heathenish and accompanied by the denial of incorporeal concepts like God and angels. This fact is attainable with decryption of Masonic scriptures. It is important to note, however, that Freemasons' such seemingly scientific justifications regarding their beliefs will not make much headway and the creation of the world cannot be explained solely based on the aforementioned formula, because there are many important and inexplicable factors left in this field. For instance, according to the mentioned formulae, the amount of matter and antimatter in the world should be equal. However, there is still no evidence regarding this notion in physics, and it's only been mentioned as an unsolved problem titled the Baryan Asymmetry. In practice, no proven answer has been found to various current ambiguities. Thus, it seems that Freemasons' citations of the law of conservation of mass energy and the pair production pair annihilation theorem in particle physics is solely a pretext for the justification of heathenish and materialistic claims of Freemasons and modern Satanism. Furthermore, the attribution of humans and angels to matter and antimatter is just a symbolism and in reality there are many questions, ambiguities and contradictions in this regard. Particularly, we see no evidence on creation of gamma rays as a result of contact between humans and demons. This fact is not observable in people possessed by demons neither. In addition, Freemasons' use of symbols such as the letter G, the expression Great Architect of Universe, and the explanations attributed to them are not facts but fabrications and justifications made based on the teachings and inspirations of the cursed Satan. However, is there further proof of Masonic thought's intervention in scientific institutions and organizations involved in particle physics? Yes, there are various factors indicating the presence of infidel and pagan symbols in scientific institutes that are active in fundamental particle physics, some of which can be specified below. 1. In a book and movie titled Angels and Demons, written by the famous author Dan Brown, who has ties with Freemasonry, the antimatter is stolen from the European Organization for Nuclear Research, or CERN, in order to explode and demolish the Vatican. Capture. I'm still reading the beam. Back to full field. 
Inject particle beams. Telling the LHC. Le collisioni sono attive, siamo di nuovo in linea. Particles at 99% the speed of light. Colliding stable beams. Inact injection kicker. We have a signal on the luminosity monitors. We have events. Photons are moving. This act has no significant or convincing reason. There was no need for such complexities in the narrative or scenario of this film. Such explosion could have been created using TNT, handmade bombs, or for greater effect with nuclear or hydrogen bombs. In particular, such amount of antimatter as accounted by the book and the movie has neither ever been stored in reality nor is transportable. Therefore, this mysterious complexity in the scenario primarily seems very odd. However, in truth, the application of the word antimatter in the movie Angels and Demons is a code word which was issued for audiences who are the followers of Freemasonry and Illuminati while cryptically indicating the role of CERN in aiding the postulation of Masonic beliefs. 2. There is an official music video called Symmetry, which is a trailer 
for a short film with the same name in 2015 and was published by the European Organization for Nuclear Research or CERN in Switzerland. In this video, the scientists, workers, and other people are in the midst of a peculiar dance. In one of these scenes, a white male scientist in white clothes is dancing in a disheveled state within a circle. A black female person in black clothes is seen walking around. The film itself has hidden Masonic elements within that are beyond the scope of this discussion. However, the way the scientists dance is similar to the way Indian deities Shiva and Kali dance of destruction. Furthermore, the aforementioned white male scientist dancing within the circle is the symbol of matter and the black female person who has all the opposing features of the scientist is the symbol of antimatter. In truth, the male scientist is the electron, the female person in black is the positron, and if they touch, gamma rays or the luciferian light shall be created. On the other hand, the location of the female black person relative to the scientist's position within the circle is very similar to the state of the Regulus star relative to the sun, which was observed in previous symbols. Hence, it seems that within the symbolic images of electron and positron, as they are preparing to collide, the Regulus star symbology has been used as well. For another perspective, there's a serious question which states that logically speaking, what is the relation between the most advanced fundamental particles research institution and such peculiar scenes such as the dance of destruction and hidden Masonic symbols used in this video clip and corresponding images? The answer to this question can clearly explain the relation between the Illuminati and Freemasonry with the CERN Research Institute. 3. The other important point in confirmation of the previous ones is that, in the main square of the European Organization of Nuclear Research, or CERN, in the heart of Europe, there is a statue of the evil Indian god Shiva in a dancing pose. Truly, what is the relation and connection between CERN and the Indian deity Shiva, whose name in the Satanic Bible has been used as an infernal god equal to Satan? What is the infidel and pagan symbol of ancient India doing in the heart of Europe and one of the top research institutes of the world? Yes, it seems that male Shiva, who is the Indian deity and god of destruction, has been used in CERN to complement his spouse Kali, who is the Indian female deity and the goddess of destruction. The presence of the infidel Shiva statue in CERN's central square is itself a confirmation of the fact that, aside from the scientific and practical dimensions of CERN, this institute is serving the evil and heathenish goals of Illuminati and theorization of the deviated beliefs of this order. One of the other subjects that confirms Freemasonry in Illuminati's misusage of fundamental physics research in institutes such as CERN is an evil mock-up sacrifice ritual that was done in a dark night in front of the statue of Deity Shiva in the central square of CERN. In this ritual, a member of students wore clothes like those of pagan and Satanist cults in the dark of the night and symbolically sacrificed one of their fellow female classmates. Although this sacrifice was symbolic and no harm came to the girl, and CERN officially denied its support of the ritual. The question remains that, why should such an ancient infidel ritual be done in the main square of CERN, such a famous research institute? Aren't there any CCTV security cameras controlling people's commute within the premises of such a famous and strategic institute at a world-class level? How could these students conduct the ritual for 10 to 15 minutes without any attempts for interruptions being made by the CERN's security team. These and many other ambiguities in this regard create serious suspicions 
in the hidden goals and intentions of a research institute such as CERN. Hence, it would seem that CERN's official denial of supporting this ritual changes nothing. Because if there were any intentions of stopping this ritual, the security team could have stopped the ritual in less than five minutes. The aforementioned facts clearly demonstrates that events taking place within CERN and similar institutes are beyond the scope of official tests and this institute serves the postulation of deviated heathenish beliefs of Freemasonry and Illuminati. After mentioning such details with regards to Freemasons' beliefs in the field of physics and its symbolic connection with Goddess Kali and Deity Shiva, we shall now return to the analysis of the I Pet Go 2 animation scenes. As we had touched upon before, Goddess Kali and Deity Shiva, which are known in Indian myths and also within the Satanic Bible as the deities of creation and destruction, have a symbolic connection with the per production per annihilation theorem. In a way that the dance of these two deities is called the dance of destruction, which is the reason why the statue of Shiva in the central square of Sir is assuming a dancing pose. In current scenes of the I Pet Go 2 animation as well, the blue child wearing the mask of Goddess Kali is doing a dance of destruction, because Kelly's dance of destruction complements Shiva's dance of destruction, and with the connection of these two rituals, the process of destruction begins. Furthermore, according to Indian myths and Masonic beliefs, considering that both deities are gods of creation as well, a new creation shall begin by these deities after the destruction is complete. These concepts are another way of stating Ordo Ap Chao, because Ordo Ap Chao also means order from chaos. In addition, it means creation from within destruction. Hence, the dance of the blue child wearing Kali's mask is another emphasis on the slogan Ordo Ap Chao. Immediately, in the next scene, we see Nitros of smartly dressed people being suddenly destroyed by the Antichrist's yawn. There's a point regarding the scene in which the Antichrist's yawn destroys the well-organized rows of people, and that is the concept of gradual awakening before becoming fully awake. This scene is in the sense that, close to the Antichrist's full awakening, the current world order will tremble and destroy. On the other hand, the well-organized rows of smartly dressed people are completely similar to how Chinese soldiers have lined up in the famous ancient monument, the Terracotta Army. The Terracotta Army is a famous ancient Chinese funerary art in which thousands of clay sculptures of soldiers were made to protect the mausoleum of the emperor. The similarities in the way the smartly dressed people stand with the way the sculptures of soldiers in the Terracotta army are lined up is symbolically in the sense that the established current economic world order, which was gradually being created by China, shall be destroyed by the hands of the Antichrist and China's economy and policies that were gradually dictating its dominance to the world shall suddenly be demolished. Considering that this scene occurs concurrently with Antichrist's yawn, it would seem that there is not much space in the time between the collapse of the world economic order led by China and the Antichrist's inauguration in Jerusalem. The global Freemasonry shall destroy the established world economic order led by China shortly before executing the deal of the century and Antichrist's inauguration in Jerusalem in order to establish the new world order from within this chaos centered in Jerusalem. There is some evidence which shows that the global Freemasonry's decision 
to cause a vast global chaos during 2019 and 2020 and 2021 is serious and the order of Chao process is being pursed exceptionally seriously, causing disorder, chaos and anarchy all around the world, such as contentions and anarchies in Hong Kong, Lebanon, Iraq, Iran, the United States, Germany, France, Belarus and other regions is part of the organized collapse and disorder plan of the current world order to cause fluctuation all over the planet and establish the new world order in Jerusalem or Beit al -Maktis. Surprisingly, a new music video from Marilyn Manson, the American Satanist singer and composer, was published in 2020, which is aligned with this vast program and is called We Are Chaos. Also, a global disappointment due to the coronavirus outbreak is mentioned in the lyrics, which Marilyn Manson encourages his audience to cause chaos. One of the most significant points in this music video is the complex and complicated encryptions that coordinate with the iPad Go 2 animation. As an example, in addition to the name of this music video, We Are Chaos, which is coordinated with the famous 33rd Masonic motto, Ordo Op Chao, incredible coordination is seen in several scenes of the music video and several scenes of the animation. For example, Marilyn Manson's exit from the cavernous mouth to a bloody sea is similar to the Antichrist's exit from the cave opening in the I Pet Go 2 animation, which is discussed in the next scenes. Also the expression, maybe I'm just a mystery, I could end up your misery, and maybe I'm just a mystery, I could be your misery. Both mention Antichrist's mutual interaction with his advocates and enemies who plays the role of a friend to one side and enemy to another side. On the other hand, showing a child in blue clothes points to the blue child or no femme blue issue, which will be discussed in the topics regarding this character and his secret connection with Satan itself. Overall. The Ordo Op Chao plan is officially initiated and Satan's followers throughout the world are constructing to advance this motto so that this global chaos will facilitate the deal of the century 
Trump Peace Plan and establishment of the global government or global state with Jerusalem as the capital. Following the mentioned complicated sequences, in the next scene, we see the Draka character, which is the serpentine dragon and a representation of the devil, quickly escapes from Ludovic's side and hides. Ludovic then stands up, stares at the horizon, and starts moving with determined eyes. Ludovic's blue eyes indicate that he is a western youngster. His name symbology, as was indicated in the previous scenes, refers to his connection with Christianity. This scene means that these young western Christians, whose minds have been brainwashed after being deceived and allured for so long by Draco or the devil, shall determinedly line up in the armies of the false Christ or the Antichrist under the illusion that they are facilitating the resurrection of the Christ blessings upon him. Unfortunately, such events have been taking place for decades and many evangelical Christians who are eager for the return of Christ are serving the evil Masonic armies such as the US Army and NATO who are supporters of the Antichrist. Hence, they are unknowingly losing their lives for supporting the Antichrist instead of serving the Christ blessings upon him. In the next scene, we see the school dagger character holding a pair of wooden sticks in his hands, moving them like an orchestra conductor in tune with the soundtrack of the animation. We then see the innocent dead face of Ali wearing the clothes of Turkish Bektashi Sufi order while unconsciously whirling around himself. As his rotating similar to the Sufi whirling, he ascends the broken ceiling of Hagia Sophia Mosque and soars through the sky. In this instance, the camera turns and shows a large view of the surroundings. In this view, we see other symbols representing various Islamic lands in addition to Ali's dance over the Hagia Sophia Mosque. This scene contains various elements that we shall examine in layers. In the first layer, we need to remind you that school degree is in the sense of fraud, trickery, and deceit in politics, economics, and culture. According to the opinions of experts, his significant embodiment in the beginning of the third millennia in Donald Trump, the president of the USA himself. It seems that in this scene, it is inferred that Freemasons also intend to return the Islamic resistance into a feudal submissive and secular Islam, much like the Islam supported in Turkey, using the Trump era, America's movements and endeavors. In other words, the Ali character in the symbol of the oppressed people of Yemen and other groups of Islamic resistance, which has been depicted in a dead form. This means that America is trying to end the Islamic resistance in the Trump era and replace it with a semi-Turkish submissive secular one all over the world of Islam. In the second layer analysis of this scene of the animation, we see a number of buildings in concentric circles forming a bright and illuminous ring around an empty area. In the center of the surrounded area, a Masonic obelisk is exhibited. This fall demonstration is shrewdly alluding to the revered Mecca and Holy Kaaba, the Muslims' Qibla, and its surrounding buildings, which are seen encompassing in concentric circles in the darkness of night and in the stand aerial image. However, the director's fall act is that, in place of the cubic sacred house of Kaaba, he has depicted an obelisk. Furthermore, we see that the holy mosque or Masjid al-Haram's court is empty. This insulting image indicates that Freemason and Illuminati are trying to replace Kaaba, the Muslim's holy Kipla, with heatherish and infidel symbols and rituals and to demonstrate a deviated version of Islam to Muslims worldwide 
while abandoning holy Islamic rituals. In the third layer analysis of this scene of the animation, we see symbols of other Islamic lands besides Hagia Sophia and the Holy Mosque or Masjid al-Haram. For instance, we see images of Ziggurat of Babylon, that is a symbol of Baghdad. The tall skyscrapers that are symbols of United Arab Emirates or the gate-shaped buildings that are a symbol of Bahrain. Furthermore, we see strings of the Masonic light shining from Hagia Sophia's door in Istanbul on all these countries and lands. This image means that the submassive and secular Turkish Islam is supposed to be established across all Islamic lands. Now the fourth layer of the analysis for this scene is the most complicated and peculiar one. As the camera is turning, we see the apparent schematic of Islamic lands in this scene resembles a phoenix whose wings are on fire and the tips of the flames have been spread around. In truth, the concentric position of the buildings that are a sign of Mecca and Kaaba looks like the phoenix eye, beak and crown. Hagia Sophia is its heart, and other pieces of land spread around water resemble the phoenix wings that have caught on fire. It seems this layer of the scene is indicating that, much like the way that phoenix catches on fire to create a new phoenix, Islamic lands will also collapse and burn so that out of their ashes, a new phoenix shall rise in the form of a modern Middle East. The result of this resurrected Middle East is the death of Islamic resistance and establishment of the secular and feudal Islam. All of the aforementioned are Freemasonry and Illuminati's illusions that God willing shall never see the light of day, which we shall further describe later on.